Welcome back to part four of building a Les Paul Jr. style guitar. Um, this episode very much concerned again with uh, neck construction and this week we're going to be carving the neck and also putting a veneer on the top. In fact we're going to be doing two of those. If you are not subscribed please subscribe. If you can't subscribe sign up to YouTube. That's the only way you're going to do it. Anyway here comes episode four. The first job I've set myself today is to mark up where the dots need to go in this neck. I had this template made up for strats uh, years ago and um, it's still really useful for guitars of any scale length because they're generally not that much different. I just position it over the dotted fret and uh, draw through the holes, just adjusting it as I go. It's a quick way of doing it. The, the traditional way of doing this is literally to draw across, corner to corner, and where the cross middle is, that's where the dot goes. But I, fi I find this template really useful for this, even if it isn't the right scale length for the uh, job in hand. There you go, all marked up. So now I'm just going to go down them and punch them up uh, so that the, the uh, drill locates properly. Centre it in the middle and just give it a little tap. Okay, let's stick some dots in. Just a little drop of super glue, tiny drop, plonk it in. Now you don't want them to go too deep. This is feeling just great. Um, it's silky smooth and the dots all look dead right. I mean the mother of pearl was definitely the way to go. Um, I like to just put it back into the body just to get the whole look and see how we're getting on and there we are. That's looking great. Looking very Les Paul Jr-esque. But of course we don't have a profiled neck and profiling the neck is the next thing we should do. Profiling the neck is funny. Uh, somebody once described to me how to um, draw an owl, uh, draw a big oval for the body of the owl and then you put a small oval obviously where the head of the owl goes and then the next instruction was draw the rest of the owl. Not very helpful. Now the owl story is sort of indicative of what building a neck is. It's a touchy-feely thing, you take it down to 22 millimeters thickness here which will do and then you join it up to the rest of the neck and you profile it using things like, oh, I don't know, microplanes and scrapers and um, spoke shapes and things like that. But at the end of the day, you're guided by your hands. So let me show you what I mean. Using a rasp just above the first fret, I make the groove. Aiming for about 22 millimeters, I check it regularly. Yeah, 22 or just under, in fact. Take a very good quality or whatever you've got spoke shave and then start moving from the base of the heel of the neck up towards the divot that you've just made. I tend to work on both sides of the neck at the same time and I just round off two sides. I can see where I'm headed. I don't want to go anywhere below that. Let's try something else, see what we've got here. This is a nice one. Yeah, this one's super sharp. from the other side. Nice. Try to keep a sort of symmetry about what I'm doing. Trying to be careful not to favour one side over the other, otherwise you can end up with a, a wonky neck. Now, I know some people draw centre lines down the middle so they can work towards the middle. I'm pretty good at working out where the middle is, so I don't feel the need to do that. I try to stay away from the fretboard. I don't want to go too deep at this stage. We want to creep up on that. I 
working up to this dip. Otherwise I'm ending up with a big banana and I want to get this flat. Work as fast as you want. That doesn't really cut very well that way. Yeah. This wood feels, how would I put it, complicated. It's beginning to skip. You know, this is not tone wood, this, this was a table. So, you know, it's not absolutely optimal, but it's good enough for our purposes. So we're now getting a bit of a curve on it. So I guess we should try our template at the first flat fret. Yeah, we're miles away halfway up. We're not actually that far away halfway up and at the 12th fret um, well, we're nowhere near there yet. If you find this scary just touch it. Just touch it and feel it and where you feel you can do something you know constructive do it. and then feel it again. Don't go too far, because you can't put it back. Okay, let's see if we can get rid of this. We need to get it down to that level. I mean, you can always practice this on bits of pine. You can practice it on anything, wood, uh, and build up to doing this on a piece of, you know, reclaimed mahogany that you spent days shaping. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds a bit daunting. Well, it can be, I suppose. You see what's happening? We're getting a guitar neck. We just need to work this point here and ease this point here and shape this heel. But basically, it's now beginning to feel like a guitar neck. It really is. of persuading it to do what you want it to do um, you've got to look at it make an appraisal 
and decide what you're going to do. Um, this wood is a bit of a gift. It's very easy to carve because it's it's sort of quite soft, but it's you know it's, it's set, it's dried out, and it's very nice to work with. We need to attack this heel, but I really need to attack the heel with reference to how it fits in the body. So if I just refit it, there we go, and then at the back here, I can see how it's going to sit. I want to get a semicircle across here, so I'm just going to roughly draw where the semicircle will be and give myself something to work to. And on the side also give myself something to follow. So when I take the neck out I know where I'm going. I'm going to leave that there now because I've gone far enough. I like to sort of leave a neck nearly there but not quite there so I can take it in the house, walk around with it, feel it, have it in my hands and decide where I want to go with it over a few hours or so. So let's plonk it back in the body and oh yes we are very close to having a woodwork complete guitar. Welcome back to Philosophy Corner and um, it's a little bit more like late night radio this one because I'm not in the workshop and I'm just sort of pondering and I was just pondering a very strange comment that was left on my uh, YouTube um, page. Um, somebody just said uh, I was just when you when you when you used your finger I just stopped watching. I mean I don't understand why but that really sort of got to me. It means that somebody was enjoying my show right up until the point that I spread glue around my finger and I can't help thinking, why would anybody stop watching because I use my finger? Every good guitar maker that I've ever worked with or been taught by spreads glue around with their finger and the reason you do it is you can feel the wood, you can feel the depth of the glue and you can feel that there's no contamination in the glue and that surface. So use your finger. It's also something you have on you all the time so, you know, it's very handy. Sorry about the pun. Anyway, that's my 10 pence worth for this week, so um, let's get on with the build. Well, I'm heading down to the workshop because I just realized there's something I should have done, which I didn't do, which is get the veneer ready for the top of the headstock. Um, wouldn't have needed to do it if I'd done it out of a solid piece, but because it's a scarf joint neck, that's the way it's got to be done. So, it's back to the workshop. So finally I'm in the workshop, got down here, forgotten the keys, got in here, started to want to film, went to turn the camera on, no memory card in it, went upstairs, got the memory card, came back down, put the memory card in the camera, and here I am. Anyway, what I want to discuss with you is the fact that when we made this, we made it with a scarf joint. So there's a sort of a diagonal joint here. The consequence of that is that we end up with this line across the, uh, the center of the neck, which is where the two pieces of wood meet. So what we need to do is to put a veneer over the top of that to cover up that joint and make it all look nice and dandy. Because I don't know yet whether I'm going to be painting this headstock or whether I'm just going to leave it, you know, with a nice piece of wood and, um, you know, stain that up and varnish it. So just by putting a veneer on it, I keep my options open. There's also another option because I've got this lovely back, but this ends up with a slight joint in it as well. Um, on the back, I may well put another veneer on the back, which means I have to put a, a veneer on that bends like that, which would mean potentially getting out the, uh, the wood bending uh, iron to bend the veneer on the back. But I think definitely this veneer is something I need to do.
I'm going to take this piece of mahogany and I'm just going to cut out a piece that's about the right size and then I'm going to have to cut the thin veneer bit off on the bandsaw. So I'm just going to roughly cut it first to get the block and then we'll take the veneer off afterwards. One veneer. Incredibly thick veneer at the moment, but we're going to plane that down and probably sand it too. Got to get this finish off it as well. So, off you come. All right, time to do the other side, I think. One little fun fact that you mustn't forget is that when you make this veneer to go on the headstock it needs an angle on this face so that when it presses up against the nut like that it forms a nice tight joint you don't have a gap because it's flat. Before I fit the nut I need to clean that slot up to make sure there's nothing keeping it from sitting in the right place. I need to spread that out using a special spreader. Finger. That gag never gets old. So I'm going to put the nut in place, but I'm not going to leave it there whilst it glues because it'll just get stuck in there. Right, so... That should do it. I think it's clamped. Okay, it, it may look like an excessive amount of clamps for a headstock, but if you don't glue it properly, it, it will never be right. So you've got to do this. So welcome back to what must be the messiest workshop on YouTube. But it's time to take all these clamps off, which is something we all love doing. How nice this is looking. <laughs> There's always a worry that when you look at these things there'll be little gaps somewhere around the edge and you're going to have to fill it. That's pretty good. I'm still a little bit uncertain about the width of this. It could perhaps do with being a bit thicker. So I think I'm still going to consider putting a, a veneer on the back. Anyway, let's get this cleaned up. Now because of the volute or that curvy bit at the back of the headstock, I couldn't actually run the router right up to the end of the headstock. So I was always going to have to finish this by hand. So just these little bits down here to clear off, I'll do that with a chisel, I think. I've just dimensioned up this piece of mahogany, it's a piece of acoustic guitar side, uh, and now I'm heating up my bender with the intention of just bending it because I've got this volute that I need to get into, so I, I need to bend it to go around that curve. Ooh, it's cracking. There's always the possibility that this will just crack and go snap. But we just go at it nice and gentle and hope that it doesn't do that. Right. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Once again, we're into gluing strategies. This time I'm actually going to put the glue on the back of the neck, I think. Just because it's easier to see and it's easier to get to. And then I've got an idea about clamping it. So I'm just going to spread that out using my special spreader. Finger. And then I think it's just a question of our usual over clamping scenario. To get this well and truly glued up tight. Okay. Now. I have come up with a plan, which is to let's do just a preliminary clamp on the end to get that in position. Okay. 
I've come up with this as a method of clamping this in a way that it will place pressure on that curve because clamping that curve is actually quite complicated. Modify your approach as you go along, but try not to panic. No such thing as too many clamps. I think the only thing we can do now is to leave that for 24 hours and uh, come back. But uh, it's definitely clamped. Well, that hopefully will be dry by now. Mm, goodness me. So, hopefully, we can just now trim this up and we've got ourselves a, a rear veneer. Well, that was part four. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you very soon with part five, when I think we're really gonna get moving on this one. See you soon, and keep building. <laughs>